What is going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle. That was sweet. Oh yeah, that will definitely stay in the film. What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD and today I'm bringing you a video on how to use a test light when it comes to things on your motorcycle. Turn signals, headlights, whatever the case may be, this caveman style tool is a very simple, quick way to figure out what's power, what's ground, where does something plug in at, and why am I not getting power to something that I need. Now, be sure to pay attention very, very closely to the beginning and the end of this whole video because somewhere in this video, there's gonna be something that should not belong in a motorcycle shop, or it's kind of odd. And the first person who can guess that will win a free Motorcycle MD t-shirt, all right? First person to guess it, just pay attention throughout the whole video. You never know when it's gonna pop up, just make sure you stick around to find out what it is. Now the bike that we will be testing on today is a 99 Nighthawk 750. I know you may be thinking, eh, why is that a silver motor? Or you're probably not. I swapped the motor out, long story. And I'll be taking the headlight off this so we can dive in here and test some stuff out. I have some aftermarket turn signals put on here because I hate the stock ones. And these are a three wire system but they're not the same color wires as Honda gives you. So it'd be kind of cool to see real life situation. What do you do when you have aftermarket turn signals you're putting on and you don't know what color they go to? And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to test that stuff out with some super basic tools that I'll put in the description below that you can actually buy yourself. Now, I want to apologize real quick for you guys. I'm sorry you probably hear some white noise going on. I bought a nice wireless set because of the donations that I get from you guys and the cord for my GoPro does not work. So, awesome. I bought it. Can't use it for my GoPro. Sorry about that. So, let's start by removing the headlight. So, what the heck is a test flight? All it simply is, is a piece of wire that can be connected anywhere to ground, so the negative part of the battery, any metal component that's not rubber mounted, all that stuff is ultimately connected to the negative side of the battery. This end can be touched to a power side of the battery. And in between here is a light. So all it does is connect the pathway. It's like a circle. It has no corners, no edges, just a circle. But you can also use it reversed. If I wanted to put this to the positive side of the battery and test grounds with it, it would do the same exact thing. This one's super basic, it's really cheap. You can get them from, uh, you know, on Amazon, Harbor Freight, it's got a little fuse in line with it in case you get too much amperage or power through the, that circuit, but really basic, all right? So I have, I'm gonna connect this to a ground. So anywhere metal on the bike, that has a nice clean ground. Key on. What a timely, timely issue to have when you're about to shoot a video on testing things like the headlight and the turn signals. My headlight does not work. High beam, low beam, no indicator, nothing. It's not the bulb. So we're gonna diagnose this problem right here, right after I show you guys how to actually use this thing. This is the one that I use. This is a, a high end. It's, this one was about 60 bucks from Snap-on, okay? and it works just like this other one does. It's a simple light and a fuse. It has a little mini computer thing inside, okay? Um, it registers, it tells me what the volt rating is, and it has two different lights, a green and a red light. Okay, the green light tells me that it's grounded, the red light tells me that it's, it's a hot wire. Super helpful because when you're reading a hot wire, you can actually get a, a digital readout of what the voltage is on that wire. Like I was saying, all this does is complete a connection. And when it completes the connection, it gives you a reading. For instance, let's say I wanted to test out, I have these aftermarket turn signals. They're dual filament bulbs. Very important for you guys who want to buy turn signals for your bike. Almost all the US bikes have a dual filament front turn signal kit. Unless you're like an older bike, like the 70s, they may not, okay? But most of the, almost all the newer bikes, I've heard some guys over in Africa have, don't have them, but whatever. US running light with your turn signals. Okay, so they function as a running light, they stay on with the key on. The rears do not because it's a single filament. 
meaning it only operates just for one cause. This has a low beam and then a brighter turn signal. Okay, dual filament. The bulb has two different circuits in it. One's a low beam, and one can blink at a brighter, higher pace. Okay? So if, if you're getting turn signal, side note, make sure that they are a three-wire signal. A two-wire signal is only one circuit. Three-wire is two. Okay? Ground, blinker, running light. Single, ground, running light, or blinker. All Hondas use orange and light blue or blue wires for their turn signals. And now I'm only talking about Honda specifically, okay? If you have another bike and you start asking questions about these color wires, I won't know, okay? So Honda, turn signals, blue is the right side, orange is the left side, always. And they'll mix it up, they'll have a blue with a stripe, a white stripe, or an orange with a white stripe, telling you that this operates something else on that left side turn signal. Always, 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 turn signals for Hondas factory harnesses will have blue and orange wires. Now I'm sure someone's gonna give me a thumbs down and say, well no there was that one in 19 so and so that had that one yellow wire, that was a mistake, or whatever. What I'm telling you is this is what's most common. So what I'll do is I'll grab these turn signals, this is the, the turn signal harness right here, okay? Here's the right side, here's the left side. Now as you can see, these are red wire, black wire solid, and a black with white. Same on the other side because they're aftermarket. They're not going to match the colors. I know that would be super simple, but they don't. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and unplug all of this. All right. Mm. Now what do you do? You took it all apart to put your new turn signals on. You're like, man, I don't know where the heck that went. All right, so it, it, there's no problem. Green for Hondas is the ground. Okay, green is ground. G and G, super easy. All right, so let's say... I wanted to find low beam section of that or the running light section of that turn signal. Obviously I can't test here the, the harness for the light because there's, there's nothing going to it. It's open. But here's where all, all, all my power is. So knowing that green is ground, I don't need to really mess with that right now unless you had a problem. Let's test the right side of the bike, blue side, turn the key on. I, I actually have a charger on my battery as well so if you're going to do this you're probably going to drain your battery. So make sure that you have either an external battery hooked up to it or a battery charger, okay? Side note. So, I have this right here, no magic. I'm gonna hook this straight to the, the header nut on the exhaust, okay? I know it's solid, clean metal, straight to the engine. The engine's grounded, the frame's grounded. It's not painted, boom. All right, so let's just see if this thing works. Key is on. I'm looking for power on this turn signal harness that I can play with. Okay, nothing there. Light did nothing. Oh, red light. Let's go on the other side, on the orange, which would be the left. Nothing. Orange with white stripe, power. So that's constant 12 volts from the battery being sent to the end of this wire. That means from here all the way back through the turn signal switch, through the fuse, through all of that stuff, there's power making its way all the way up to here. Now because I can actually read the voltage, it's saying 11.8 volts. My battery's dead because I was doing some testing. I know, that's why it's on the charger. But I can read that all the way up to here. Now figuring out if you have a voltage drop or some kind of high resistance through the circuit, that's a whole other situation. I may make a whole class on that for everybody to tune in. But for now, we're just gonna do the basic stuff, okay? So now that we've figured out that which wire is our constant wire, we gotta figure out which one to plug into on the turn signal, okay? So this is right here, right here. Yeah, right here, yeah, it's right here. See this, it's right here. This is the right turn signal. We always, when I'm talking about left or right, it's always when you're sitting on the bike, never looking at it, okay? So here's the right, and we got a red wire, a black wire, and a black with white. Now from head knowledge, I pretty much know with this, who makes this, which I think is MGO, what kind of color codes they have. Hopefully the lights that you got have some kind of instruction with it that say, this is what this is, this is ground, this is uh, power constant, this is power blink, or whatever, whatever they say. Hopefully it tells you that, but let's say it doesn't. Okay, I have now completely forgot which one this goes to. 
Now, off the top of my head, I'm going to think, okay, red, fire, hot. That's just what I think. Now, which one could be ground, black or black with white? Because all, all, all the light bulb wants is just a complete circuit. That's all it does. It doesn't care what's positive, what's ground. It really doesn't. All it is is saying, I want power here, I want power here. Some way, I want to be able to make a, a complete circuit. If you get it all wired wrong, you're going to have something funky going on. A really bright light on this side and a low light on this side. Then that's when you have to start really saying, okay, well, something is backwards here. But a light bulb doesn't care what's power or what's ground. I guarantee you. When it's isolated by itself. Now, someone's probably going to dislike that I just said that. But it's true. Okay? And I can prove it to you. Now, here is a battery. I'm going to set this down right here. All right. And then I have my alligator clips right here. Both of these are good. There's no break in them. The, let's see, the white one will be my power wire. This green one will be my ground. Here is the right turn signal. Let's hook power to the, let's see, black with white, ground to the black. It's working. Let's say power to the red. It's really bright, but it's working. Let's do the power to the black. Here's the ground. Oh, low beam. This must be what? Another low beam. So that that's where you can kind of say, okay, well something's not right. Okay. So which one do you freaking do? Well, the one that works both circuits. Sorry if that was confusing, but that was just to prove to you guys that it doesn't matter how I hook this up with power and ground. The light doesn't care as long as you're giving it power and ground in that circuit. So what we can also do, which I'll put in the description of the little alligator, they're awesome. I love these things. So I'll hook this to the ground, and then I'll hook this ground. Let's go to that black wire, which is a solid wire. I'm going to assume that that's ground. Power wire on that blue with a white stripe. Let's figure out which circuit is which. Low beam. That must be the running light. Low beam. Okay, so that black one must not be ground because I didn't get any high beam out of that bulb. Let's move this ground over to the black with white. Low beam, really bright. So with the ground wire that I have hooked up to my black with white striped wire on the harness for the light, ground to the green. Follow me here, follow me. I know it's getting boring. Power, blue with white, which we know can be tested with that test light, to the red, we get a constant bright. That's our high beam, or the turn signal for that circuit, okay? Low beam, running light, high beam, turn signal. Okay, so we know that the ground is going to be our black with white. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Now what we can do is we can test to see if this solid blue, which is the same color as that blue with white, is working. All right, let's grab the test light again. Into the blue, I got no power at all. The right turn signal on. Check that out. Blink, 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 blink. That must be the turn signal wire. A new. So that's the turn signal wire. We want that bright bulb for that. Which one was that again? It wasn't the black. It's gotta be the red. Plug the red into the solid blue connector and the black, which we know is the constant, into that constant. Now we have a functioning right turn signal. Same thing would be applied to the left. Which one's positive? Black with white to ground, red to solid. Now, like I said, the lights you order should hopefully come with some instructions inside, like a small piece of paper, so don't just throw away the trash. It'll probably tell you how it works. So now, let's see if we have all of our lights working. Right turn signal, left turn signal. We're back up and running, all right? So hopefully you're still awake. I didn't bore you to death with all that electrical jargon. I'm trying to, to, to show you guys how simple it is, okay? I know that electrical is difficult because you cannot see it, but this allows you to see it, which is what's really cool. And I'm going to show you guys how versatile of a tool this is. So I'm going to diagnose my headlight that does not work. And to be totally honest with you, I forgot that it does not work. I got two bikes. It stopped working and I started riding the other one. I, I didn't even diagnose it. And it stopped working because, long story short, low sided in the turn because of about two inches of sand and a really really tight back road that I did not see coming whatsoever.
bam, hit the ground. The headlight did not work after that. So, let's diagnose it. And I'm fine, the bike's fine, everything is cool. I wasn't hustling through the corner, but literally I had to walk back 20 feet from sliding and say, what did I hit? And I finally got right over top of the corner and kicked a whole inch and a half of sand. And didn't even see it coming, man, and that's my own fault. That's what I get for going around some tight back roads in the country. So, and honestly, I've just been kind of mad at it, you know? I'm like, yo, you're in timeout for a month. You know, my mouth's like the Sahara Desert. Not so dry. Talking. Now, when it comes to any electrical diagnostic procedure, you got to have some information about your bike. Yes, you can go on Facebook groups, you can go on forums, you can go on whatever and take all the pictures in your world and say, hey, what's this wire do in a picture? But you know, that, that's not teaching you anything when it comes to your bike. It's literally just having someone else answer the question for you. And what you need to have is some kind of wiring schematic. I know they may look very intimidating, but I'm, I'm gonna walk you through a quick, quick step on how to use them. Now remember, we are working with electricity. So take all the safety precautions that you can to make sure that you're not gonna hurt yourself, hurt the bike. If you're, if you're not sure, you're unconfident about what I'm showing you, you know, maybe it's just not your thing. But regardless, I'm gonna break it down so it's really simple for you to understand. So as we know, this tests power. With the key on, it's obvious that my headlight does not work. Nothing. No high beam. Even if I were to bump the starter button, which, which we do a lot for certain problems, because the headlight is routed through the starter button so that it can cut it, so that it can give more juice to the parts needed to start the bike, okay? As soon as you release the starter button, headlight should come back on. Sometimes you can find a problem just by doing that. That's free, okay? That, that part's free. So, no light whatsoever, okay? I actually have no high beam, no high beam indicator at all here. So the first thing that you should probably do most people do is check first your battery terminals, make sure that they are tight, and then check fuses. Okay, on this bike, the fuses are located right beside the battery on the right. And if you don't know where your battery is on your bike, then you need to start doing a little bit more research about your bike because that's a super important thing to know about your bike. All right, so here's the fuse box for our Nighthawk. Okay, as you can see, my lid's broken, nice and brittle, but it'll tell you which fuse is which. Okay, starting from the top, reading like a book. I can now test all these, key on, and we can use the test light to see if there's any fuses that are blown. Very simple. So the key is on right now, We've got power there. That's where these little metal tangs are on top of the fuses. You can, that's where you, you can actually test them at. We've got power there, power to that side of the fuse as well. So that fuse is not blown. Here's the actual headlight fuse, 10 amp fuse, power, power, ah, fuse is not blown. Let's carry on. Ignitions fuse, that one's good. 30 amp fuse, that one's good. There's also another fuse on the starter solenoid, but we don't need to go into that one right now because I have horn, I have turn signals, I have everything else. Okay, so the main fuse is not blown. This is gonna be a long freaking video. If I were to test the fuse, okay, so there's those two prongs that hang up in the fuse box on the top of the fuse, and if I were to test one, I have power, Test the other had no power. Fuse is blown. Very very simple thing. I don't. I'm not gonna start replacing fuses because they're all working. You know what I mean? So I, I hear people all the time say, "Oh, I replaced all the fuses," but you, you don't need to do that because you can test it with a test light. So knowing that I have power to the headlight fuse, it's going through the fuse and carrying on down the circuit. So let's look at that on a schematic standpoint. I don't have an amazing camera. If someone wants to buy me an amazing camera, I'll be more than happy to accept it. But all I got is this GoPro here, a three. So, headlight fuse is here, this middle one, okay? And I can see that it has two wires. One would be the ground, because all the fuses are connected to the same ground, okay? Those, those little black dots means that that's where they splice into the harness to connect those two wires. Super basic wiring diagrams 101. This other wire is a black with red, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna follow this black with red to see where it goes. All the way across here, looks like the black with red shows up right into this. This is what I love about newer manuals. They actually tell you 
what kind of connector it goes into. So here's a mini connector, six pin, and it's saying that it's red, it has a little R on it. And the black with red goes into that connector. And then it goes into the starter engine stop switch, black with red, okay? So because the fuse, I had power on both ends. So that tells me that the black with red should have power because it's leaving that other side of the fuse. It should have power, you know, like it, it has to because unless it ends, as soon as it leaves that fuse, highly unlikely other fuse box is destroyed or melted or something like that, okay? Or of course, there's some kind of burn or break in the harness up to that headlight. Make sense? So let's test it out. All right, so the first thing we gotta do is find that red connector. And what do you know? Here it is. But I'm gonna find that black wire with the red stripe. Okay, so here's the connector. It looks like it's far left, okay? Closer to you, far left. Now, key on. We know the fuse is good. We should have power on that black and red wire. Look at that. Now let's see if it goes through the connector. All I'm gonna do is go to the other side of the connector to see if it's making a good connection. And it is. And with a meter like this, this is where this comes in handy. Because if I have 11.9 volts on this side, and on this side, I have 11.9, there's literally no voltage drop through that connector. If I had 11.9 on this side, and six volts on this side, obviously something is wrong in this connector. That's free. So, black and red has power, awesome. Now where does that go? Let's find out. That black with red goes into this little box here, okay? The box is labeled the starter engine stop switch. That black with red, if you, if you look, see where it goes into, it actually is labeled, this little dot says HL, headlight. Well, if you keep looking on here, there's actually another dot that says HL one, headlight one, okay? Which means that in this box, which is your starter switch housing, there is some kind of switch that connects headlight, black and red, to headlight one, blue with white. So let's see, if it comes in hot, black with red, we already know it's good. We know from here back is all good. The blue with white, what I would think, is that it should have power, because that's the only thing that, that kind of makes sense. So let's check that headlight one on the blue with white wire. Now this is outside of this box. So they're saying that this wire is actually all by itself. Okay, blue with white, all by itself, all the way down to here. It's still by itself before it hits the left control side over here. Okay, so blue with white, which, which would be like where your high beam switch is right, right here. Hope you're staying with me. So let's see if the blue with white has power. Now right behind that red switch was actually that blue with white wire. So, key on, we know we got power with the black and red on both ends. Blue with white, absolutely nothing. Dead wire. It should though, because it's telling me that the power's going through the switch up here and coming down back to here to, to leave to go to the other side, okay? So what that, now that's telling me is on the low beam side, it's not getting past the starter switch because that's the only thing in there that uses that wire. Starter switch. Remember I said, kills the headlight so it gives more power to the coils to start up the bike. So let's think. If I wanted to, let's say, bypass that starter switch, I guess all I would need to do is just connect that blue with white that should have power to the black with red that does have power. Because then all I would do is just make my own connection from there to there, bypassing that potentially bad switch. Let's see what happens. All right, disconnect the blue with white. Now this is a really important tool to have as well. You can pick them up at almost any store ever in America that ever existed, and it's a paper clip, okay? Bend it straight in half, make a little U. So if I were to take this, I'm gonna put it right touching that black with red, okay? Because now that's hot. That paper clip should be hot. Is it? Let's see. It is. See my test light? So now that paper clip's hot, hot like fire. Take this jumper wire that I have, I'm just gonna connect it to there, and then touch right here. BAM! Just kidding, just kidding. Now what you don't wanna do is touch the paper clip to a ground, okay? Cause that's a hot piece of metal right there. It's got 12 volts going to it. 
So you don't want to gr straight the ground, and that could actually be damaging to the circuit. So just be mindful of what you're doing. Keep it away from metal parts. What I'll do is I'll take this hot wire and hook it up to my blue with white. And you know when I was telling you guys not to touch that metal paper clip to ground? I did. And you know what it did? It blew my fuse because it made it straight to ground, too much power to that fuse. So I gotta replace the fuse now because I'm an idiot. Bad fuse, bad fuse. What you gonna do? Don't touch the hot power straight to ground because it has no load to take it, okay? So key off. Everything is away from metal this time. Hot wire with the key on. So I'm gonna jump the starter switch. Now this end, which was the female end, goes straight, let's see, because we only want a certain side. So this end goes to the switch, but we're gonna bypass that switch. Okay, so if I go to the harness end, which ultimately leads to the headlight, and I jump it, I now have a fully operational headlight. High beam, low beam, indicator works, everything works. Another quick way to test it with a test light would be to know which wire is which in the back of the headlight. So before you go and buy a headlight bulb just to test it, you can just test it right here. Green is ground, white should have power with the key on. Dark blue should have power with the high beam on, okay? White's low beam, blue's high beam. So if everything was working from the back of the bike all the way to the front, Power on the white low beam and power on the blue high beam with the switch activated. So I hope you guys were able to chew on something from that, okay? I know that it was a lot of information, a lot at once, um, in a very boring monotone voice like mine. But what I ultimately wanted you to know is that the test light tool is a fantastic tool to have if you own a motorcycle. When it comes to, if you're installing lights, you know, and you can you literally use it for anything. The only time you don't, you can't use it is when you're testing things more specifically, like resistance or AC voltage or um, you know amp draw and that kind of stuff. But for basic, basic, where's power? Where's ground? Why am I not getting this? That tool is great, great tool to have. Again, your manual will always be needed when you're doing electrical work, unless you are you know very well versed in electrical work for that bike specifically. And you know the harness backwards and forwards because every bike is different. Just because certain switches do certain things on this Nighthawk, it probably is not the same for yours or it may be very, very similar. But having that manual, that schematic there is, I mean, is gold. Now, I know that was a long video, but I hope you guys were paying attention from start to finish because again, there was that one item that really has no reason to be in a shop. What was it? The first person to comment below with exactly what it is will win a free Motorcycle MD t-shirt. Again, in the future, I might actually do a live webinar when it comes to electrical. I know it's hard, but I think I might be able to explain it to you guys in a better way in some kind of live classroom. If you're interested in something like that, shoot me a comment below and say, yeah, man, that would be awesome. Make sure you join my email mailing list at MotorcycleMD.com. For those of you who want a t-shirt, go ahead and go to the site, go to the Support MD drop-down. Now, and this is your first time being on this channel, subscribe, man. Hit the alert button because you never know, on Mondays, 8.30, p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I do a live Q&A where I go through emails that I get from people going to the website and filling out the YouTube live survey. And we talk about them together as a group on YouTube Live. It's awesome. It's going really, really well. So if you have a question about your bike, preferably Honda, I try to do fundamentals for all bikes, but that's what I specialize in. Fill out that survey about your bike and let's talk about it. YouTube Live Mondays at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I know this was a lot, but as always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, giving you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily riders. I will see you guys next time.